Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for trusting us, Lord, and, and bringing us here, Lord. Lord, we're thankful and grateful for the blessings that you're doing, Lord, the doors that you opened, as well as the doors that you didn't open, Lord. Lord, I ask that right now, Lord, that you just open the hearts, Lord, the, the souls will be saved today, Lord, and that you are going to strengthen your people, Lord. I ask that, Lord, that anyone that needs healing, Lord, that you release that healing right now, Lord. Lord, I pray against any distractions, Lord, any strongholds, anything that, any signs of depression or pride, Lord, I ask that you break those down. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, I was asked to preach uh, a couple months ago, Pastor Bob, so I've been speaking and, and uh, talking to the Holy Spirit, trying to, trying to get the right words, you know. It's, a, it's also, it's one of those things where you have been entrusted to do something for God and you want to do it right. Uh, and you want to do it to his glory and his honor. So it's, uh, you know, spending time with him to receive what he wants. Uh, we just got back from Pennsylvania uh, this past week. And uh, on the flight, I was praying and just asking God to give me, uh, you know, just speak to my heart. And uh, one thing that, that I would say is uh, I got an analogy. So Pastor Bob is the pilot. I'm the co-pilot. So the pilot has trusted me with, the, with flying the planes. We're about to take off right now. Uh, but we know that, that the Holy Spirit is in the control tower. So he's watching and directing us. So we are, we're OK with that. <laughs> so uh, which you know, brought peace to my heart, too. So. Um, so today we'll be reading in Matthews 25, four, starting at verse four, uh, 13 through 30. Um, as many of you know, I am a teacher, so I, like, I love to take my time with certain sentences and, and dive into it. So we ask that the Holy Spirit just open our hearts and our minds uh, in doing so. So I'll give some time to, for you guys to open to 25, verse 13. So growing up for me, um, in my ministry, I've been um, entrusted in the prophetic, and it's always been something that um, since I was a little, little teenager, it was something that was evident in my family. The Holy Spirit would speak to me, and it wasn't much just for my family. So it was something that it was needed to bring comfort, to bring direction, correction. And I would speak to the, our eldest, our great grandmother. So it would just it would be in that format. So I was reading, uh, you know, the essential body. We need a fivefold ministry, where we need the we need our apostles. We need our um, our prophets, we need our evangelists, we need our, our pastors, and we need our teachers. And if you look at your hand, you have the thumb. The thumb is the apostle. And that is what's going to touch every finger and it provides the grip to the hand. The prophet is the one that points and is the one that gives direction, that gives instruction of the Lord. Amen. And then you have your evangelist, and this is the middle finger, and this one can go to the furthest of all of your fingers. So it goes against, it goes across the world. You have your pastor who is the ring finger. And this is the one that is, the pastor is married to the sheep and is always with them. And then you have the pinky and that's the teacher. And that one is to bring balance to the hand. So with that being said, I'm gonna be uh, going through all these, but in more the, in the realm of the prophetic. So I want us to look at um, the parable of the talents. Many of us have probably heard this uh, growing up or just if you've been in church long enough. Um, Jesus was speaking here. If you look at your Bible, if it's all red, then you know that's Jesus speaking. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> that's a clear sign. So um, we start off with verse 13. So as we are reading, I will be pausing and having you to underline. That's part of our reading strategies for our teaching careers. We have to okay, so underline this for key focus. So I, I'm reading from the Holman edition, um, so your verse will be similar to this. Therefore, be alert, because you do not know either the day or the hour. For it is the man going, it, for it's like a man going on a journey. He calls his own slaves and turns over his position to them. So verse 13, how many of us know that our the King of Kings is returning back. Yeah. Amen. So this is who we're referring to. Be alert that you are ready for the King of Kings. Jesus is coming back. Amen. <clears throat> to, uh, verse 4, 15. To one he gave five talents. To another, two. And to another, one. To each according to his own ability. Then he went on a journey. Immediately. 
under verse 15, if you can underline, to each according to his own ability. The man, verse 16, the man who had received five talents went, put them to work, and earned five more. Verse 17, in the same way, the man who earned, uh, two, with two earned two more. Verse 18, but the man who had received one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. Verse 19, after a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Underline, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Verse 20, the man who received five talents approached, presented five more talents and said, Master, you gave me five talents. Look, I've earned five more talents. Verse 21, his master said to him, well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful over a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Share your master's joy. Verse 22. Then the man with two talents approached. He said, Master, you gave me two talents. Look, I earned you two more talents. Verse 23. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful over a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Share your master's joy. Verse 24. Then the man who had received one talent also approached and said, Master, I know you are a difficult man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. Verse 25. So I was afraid and went off and hid your talents in the ground. Look, you have what is yours. Verse 25, underline, So I was afraid and went off and hid your talents in the ground. 26, But his master replied to him, You evil, lazy slave, If you knew I, that I would reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered, then you, were, you should have deposited my money with the bankers. And when I returned, I would have received my money back with interest. Verse 28, so take the talent from him and give it to the one with, who has 10 talents. Verse 28, go ahead and underline, take and give to the one that has 10 talents. Verse 29, for to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have more than enough. But from the one who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him and throw his good-for-nothing slave into the outer darkness. In the place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Thank you, Lord, for this, for this word that you have given us. Amen. So in reading this, I've been studying it and, and seeing how it will apply to us today in this church and here in, in Texas and in the U.S. Um, and we can all sit back and we can, we can look at uh, and study the text. But one of the things that I wanted us to look at is the word talent. What is the talent? All right. Okay? And if we have talent, what are we doing today with our talents? Right. Right. Okay? Um, and one thing we do know is that you can't say, well, I don't, I'm not talented, I don't have any talent, because then that's not biblical, because everyone received a talent, yeah. some more than others. Yeah. Um, so we have to analyze ourselves and say, what, what talent do we have? And number one, what are we doing to use that for the kingdom of God? Amen. Amen. So with that being said, um, also another uh, clarity there. Uh, when I was flying, the seatbelt sign went on. And uh, that, meant, that meant we were still rising in altitude. So we're still going up in altitude. So keep your seatbelt on. I don't need anyone running around the church yet. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, so we, we can all sit back and remember people that we grew up calling talented at one point or another. Yeah. These people were talented by um, their skills, their ability to play ball, to sing, to draw. Uh, we could all agree that they were going somewhere. Webster Dictionary, I'm also an English teacher, so I, that's my other friend. Webster Dictionary defines talent in several ways. The first definition in Webster says, 
a special, often athletic, creative, or artistic aptitude. First, uh, the second definition says, a unit of value equal to the value equal to the value of talent of gold or silver. So think about that. So you have talent that is equal to the value, equal to the value of gold and silver. When I was reading that, that hit my spirit, and I remember Job 23.10 that says, but he who knows the way that I take, when he has tested me, I will come as forth as pure gold. Yep. Yep. So our talents are equivalent to gold in the kingdom of God, Amen. and that is our currency. Right. So we go back and we look at those talents, and we say, okay, God, we have talents. You've given us talents some more than others. That is uh, the recipe for comparison. Why does this person have X amount of talents and I only have one? Um, well, we shouldn't compare our talents because we are all given different talents based on our abilities. If you do so, then you will become frustrated. You say, well, I want to be just like so-and-so. I want to do what so-and-so is doing. Um, and that, in that realm of speaking, talent in that format, I think it's the basic definition. We can all agree that talent, if I play keyboard, if I play the drums, I have two talents. Yep. If I play the guitar, I have three, three, three talents. That's right. So that's just, the, that's just the basic understanding of talents. Right. But I want to go further into the discussion of what God was maybe taught, trying to get us to understand, is that talent can go further from the definition, can be the entirety of the word talent. So for some of us, this can be very much so our children. Our children are our talents. And what are we doing with our children? We gotta remember that God entrusted you with his children. So as parents, we sometimes say, oh, that's my child, this and this. But we gotta remember that the children are the heritage from the Lord. They are loaned to us. So what are we doing with that talent? Are we spending time with the talent? Are we instructing the talent? Are we uh, loving the talent? Are we uh, making sure the talent is growing to be healthy? And that's, that's a talent. You know, we as, as individuals have to know the talents in that format. You have children, they are a talent that God has entrusted you. We can go further into this and say, okay, what about our marriages? What about our relationships? That's another talent. When you look at verse um, in the Bible, the verse where Jesus has come back, or the master has come back, he says that he was coming to, do, to bring account to what, what they did with the talent. So when Jesus is coming back, he's going to call you back forth and say, I, I've trusted, entrusted you with those talents. What did you do? Yeah, right. So I've given you a healthy marriage. What did you do with them? Yeah. Did you make it, did you soil it? Did you, did you take advantage of it and didn't, didn't spend enough time with it? Did you not water it? So we have to go back and say to ourselves, what are we doing with the talents that God has given us? And those, those talents are equivalent to gold. So right. some of us want to be millionaires, want to be one day, if I can just get another raise, if I can do this. You have talents already hidden in your house. Amen. You just have to go back and say, God, <laughs> remind me of my talents. Right. Remind me of my talents. Um, our finances. We are stewards to the finances. These are also talents. So we have to be stewards to those talents, those finances, and saying, God, examine me. How am I doing with your finances? And this is for all of us. You know, all of us can do better at becoming financial stewards. You know, so we have to go back and say, God, speak to us, correct us, guide us. 